Alright, alright, Spricker, you know how it goes down. Y'all up first, y'all up the bat first. I'm about to go all the way live as usual. We up on all of our functions right now. We're not modern, so we ain't really doing the Instagram no more. My my system can't handle that right now. I'm still working on getting my system. There's no more waters downstairs? I don't okay. get one from here. No, no, leave it alone. Leave it alone, please. All right, it's time for y'all to go to bed, ladies. All right. All right, family. I need to open up the call lines. Brother Shaka's on. I'm about to open up the line. The line is not open as of yet, Brother Shaka. But we will get you together in a second. Uh-huh. Go to our Uber coffee. Oh, my hair look horrible. Oh my God. Oh Lord, bless me. This hairstyle is just oh. Oh my God. All right, family. No. That's you. I'm. Tell uh tell Mr. Cleve to come here real quick. Cause I'm gonna need him to give me some water. Brother is parched. I am parched. Yes, I am. What's up, doe? Who's that on the Giami journey? Time to lock up, family. We about to do it. Uh, let me make sure we on YouTube. Uh, yeah. All right. Hey, Clee. Yeah. I need you to go bring me that big old, that big thing of water downstairs. And uh, bring me that bottle out of the refrigerator. But look good as always. Thank you. Thank you. The text is going out. Letting the family know. The big thing of water down here, down you the basement. The, uh, yeah, bring the um the one thing with the lines and stuff. We about to get this. It's about to go down on Giami Journey family. Y'all know it's about to go down. I'm just getting prepared. I got to get my water. I didn't have my water ready because I came in late. I left my keys at, at the job. And those that know, you know, I, I I need my keys. You know what I'm saying? I need my keys. So, you know, we about to do it. All right. Um... So who is that controlling the Giami Journey piece so I can make sure? Hey, whoever out there on Giami Journey, why don't you type in 614-556-4535. Once again, that number, that call-in number is 614-556-4535. Y'all know how we do it. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you got your water. Want to make sure the family got their water. Because we must stay hydrated. We must stay hydrated. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm, I'm out. I'm checking out all of the... All of the... Um, post about the Black Panther movie. And I am so glad that the conversation is going down. I, I'm just... I'm so glad because we... We really, really need to be having some of these conversations, man. It's very important. I honestly believe. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people don't understand the importance of story and I keep on trying to tell people the big one that's not full. The big jug of water that I go to the place and get good God Almighty. And I'm going to need a glass too. Alright, so we're about to let it start. We're about to let it go down. Shouts out to Spreaker. Shouts out to those on YouTube. Shouts out to the family that is on Facebook. I want to. I want to salute first. My oh, I want to first salute my people. Time to lock up, man. This red June is delicious. Man, Shaka, how you in two places at one time, brother? How you in two places at one time? I don't understand. Go and pour some water in there. I don't understand how you in two places at one time. Who is that saying? They, I'm not going to talk about Black Panther. Sure you're not. Sure you're not. I'm telling you, this, this folk tale is going to take us right into it. It's going to take us right into this it. This call is being recorded. Somebody is on the line. Who's on the line? This is Brother Shaka. How you doing? I'm doing good. Lady J is on the line. That's enough, Clee. That's enough. If you could, How you doing, Lady J? Oh, she ain't on the line yet. I think she'll be coming on okay. the line real soon. The number is 614. Let me see if I can type it up there for everybody. The number is... Oh, hey, what's up, Jack? Jack? I'm bailing out. Sister, hey, how, how's everything going? How is everything going on 
Um, in 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 uh, Maryland, how's your husband? Is everything cool? We've been sending out energy to him on a monthly basis. You know what I'm saying? But we about to kick it, family. It's about to go down. We about to build, and here we go. So let's get the show started. I don't know. I have to tell you. I had enough. Peace, this is Brother Hakim, and you have joined us on Giami Journey Radio. Be sure to check out our site and subscribe at tribe.giamijourney.com. Get your movement in. All my brothers and sisters, lay your hands and bow your heads. Let us pray. Oh, man. The 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 ancestors are incredible when we start calling on the family. Along with you, Judge, I'm just the ancestor, first of all, wicked. I say, 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 Rise, oh God, judge the earth. Bow down to death, all nations. Allah is our Lord. That's what we're talking about. That's what it's about. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Since the Black Panther came out, my timeline been blowing up. Keep up with comments. the comments. Check out yeah. what we have done in the past. Go to journeyarchives.com. This is Adam Sheik, aka Ace, live from Shisha Lounge. And you are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. Get hydrated. Feel my see energy come back. Journey on Facebook. Oh, feel the energy building up. Check us out. Join the journey. Lady J is on the line. Lady J is on the line. This is Adam Sheik, aka Ace, live from Shisha Lounge, and you are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. Come on now, throw your hands in the air, wave them like you just don't care. That's enough for that. You are now listening. I had to stop the music because we need to get started with the show. We have finally been able to make it on time. But before we move forward, I need to let you know you are now listening to Giami Journey Media. Of course, you know, this is a heart of a similar production, and we are now on folk tales for grown folks, for those that don't speak the language, for those that do, it's FFGF, and it's a heart of a similar production, where we strive, strive, strive to blow up those old paradigms. And I have to do a eulogy. Because an old friend of mine that I know very well just passed away. And my heart is saddened. He was known in the hood as Pookie Johnson. And Pookie Johnson was the son of a Black Panther. And he had great dreams. And he studied at MIT. And he aced everything that they gave to him. And every time I saw Pookie, he had a book in his hand. And he was studying strategies of war. 
and Pookie went to the military and became a special forces trooper, a Navy SEAL. He quit the Navy SEALs and went and joined the Army Green Beret. And then after that, he joined the Air Force Special Forces just so that he could have it on his resume. He became a mercenary and started operating in black ops. And then he went back to his homeland where he wasn't accepted only because he came in with a bad attitude. I mean, everybody have a bad day. But Pookie had a bad life because his father was found murdered laying on the floor with panther calls in his chest and Pookie never forgot this. Y'all know him as Eric Killmonger and I just want to raise this glass and toast my friend, the revolutionary Eric Killmonger. I just had to get that out. We knew him as Pookie in the hood. All right, so on the line, I got Lady J, and I also have Brother Shaka. Um, let's start off with the lady first, the lady warrior on the line. How are you doing tonight, and do you have something to share with the people? Yes, um, I just want to share with them that I'm going to get you some much-needed help. You're going to give me some help? Is it financial help? Yeah, that's it. Is, is it financial yeah. help? If it's financial, I'm I'm all for it. People hanging up now because I just toasted Eric Killmonger. You know, because I know people say <laughs> they getting up they getting up off of the stream now because I done went too far. You know what I'm saying? But see, <laughs> then came in the house. You know what I'm saying? You just missed my toast. I just toasted Eric Killmonger, also known as Pookie Johnson in the hood. His name, nickname was, I know him as Pookie. You know what I'm saying? Um, but go ahead. Do you got anything else you want to share, Lady J? A little a little bit more on a serious note? Um, Even though you probably wish you were giving me some help. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Even though. Yeah, I I, I am most uh, refreshed. Um, most, um, I'm just most refreshed. Um, if, if I had to rate myself physically, spiritually, emotionally, I would give myself. 15s across the board. Dang, five above 10. That's hot. Yeah. We got somebody else on the line, but go ahead. Just having people. Uh oh, Brother Shamar is on the line. So we doing the check in right now. CeeLo, how you doing? Um, if anybody else on the line, please post up how you doing or you can call in to 614 556 4535. Brother Shaka, how you doing? Brother, I am blessed, highly favored, cherished, and my belly is full of this delicious red June. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, I, 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 I especially want to shout you out and say thank you for that Goldie. Mm -hmm for me being able to play mad scientist in my house and make this delicious healing elixir that my son even likes. Like he, uh, you know, I, I, I gave him some of the original June, you know, the way you do it, you know. And then I, and then I, he, he liked it. He was like, ooh, it's like the fight at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and then gave him some of the red June. He shut up for a minute. He just kept sipping at it. And then I sipped it. I said, what is, what's going on? Man, this stuff tastes almost like, almost like a peach soda. Just a real champagne-y. So once again, thank you for getting me into this, in, in, into this, this, this fine mess that I'm in. Because, uh, man, it's a, it's a whole different world. It's a whole and it's, different existence. And, and it's, it's easy, ain't it? It's easy, isn't it? It's easy. The, the hard part is walking away from it. <laughs> hey, well, let me. I'm going to throw up so everybody can see what, what he mean. Uh, I got I got two bottles here. I'm all, look at that. Two gallons almost done. And the only thing that's holding me back 
from brewing is that my car broke down and I had to take some uh, some of my money and, and go on and invest in my car so that I can stay mobile. And and, and, and y'all see my regular my regular toast my toast jar is gone, so I'm gonna have to be doing green tea for a couple of days until I get some until I get some money. But hey family, brother Shamar is also on the line. Brother Shamar, you wanna check in, sir? How you doing? Hey, hey, I'm feeling pretty smooth on my end. Mm. Just wanna uh, miss the miss the last few uh, sessions. So I now need to make sure I caught this one. Mm. Well, we appreciate absolutely. We appreciate all of y'all taking the time to call in so that we could break down um, these folk tales and see how timely they are. Because we did this one before, but it's like different versions. What's crazy is, as I go through this book, I'm starting to see repeat stories. And those that's been doing this with me for a while, you'll start seeing the repeat stories and be like, wow, why is this one told this way? And you know what I'm saying? So that, that builds up the discussion. But then also, what I want everybody to understand is that when we looking at, when we are studying stories, when we are looking at stories, it's important to realize that stories do something for us that regular facts cannot do. Stories make us have to use our whole brain. This is why movies are important. This is why music is important. This is why it's important that when you when when you are talking to people that you are able to frame frame what you're talking about into a story. As I explained this morning, I just got done listening to a book called The Culture Code. And they say in order to form a, a, a successful culture, you need three that, three things. A sense of safety, you got to build safety, right? So that people in their safety feel comfortable and feeling vulnerable. Because the only way that you're able to develop a, a cohesive unit is if people are vulnerable. Which is one thing in America that we strive not to be because it's, it's a sense of weakness. But in order for a team to be successful... We need to know where each other falling short so that we are able to compensate and work as one organism to get shit done. And the last one is building okay. in a sense of uh, a sense of purpose, which is a story about where we are and where we're going. Now, one of the things about this black can you, re can you just can you can you list those one more time right there? Safety, a, a, a culture has to cultivate safety, and that safety, through that safety, individuals are able to expose their vulnerabilities. They're able to become vulnerable to the group, and in becoming vulnerable to the group, we learn about each other's weaknesses, and we compensate as a group, so we operate as one unit. As one, as a culture rather than as an individual. And finally, the last one is that we operate in purpose. Because once we are able to be feel safe, we, we, are, we expose our vulnerabilities to our teammates and to our other people in our culture, right? We are able to start building the story of where we are and where we need to go. And this is and, and, and because when you think about a family, the one of the major things is a couple of things that humans have that no other animals on this planet have, which allows us to, in a sense, dominate this planet. We have a storytelling capability, right, which is very important because we are able to formulate not only what's going on right now, what happened in the past, but we're able to form and formulate stories that can guide us into the future. See, and one of the things that we're not doing with our young people is formulating a story that guides them into the future. We're allowing others to formulate those stories. That's why I was stressing um, when the brothers and, and the sisters was talking about going to see the Black Panther that we definitely needed to have a conversation about the movie afterwards because we did know what was coming and we need to make sure that we are able to, in a sense, control the narrative for our culture, or at least start a discussion about the narrative within our culture. 
So whether we're talking about symbol, whether we're talking about geometry, whether we're talking about the young people at Millennium or any other any of the other schools that we are at, we need to be able to use these these story mechanisms to start building with our young people. All right, because a lot of times we think that building means that we out here getting actual material things. No, we got to start with the basics. And the first things that human beings had was our ability to tell stories, which allowed us to come together and allowed us to move together. Like hands on a finger. Right? So, all right. Now, since everybody checked in, I did my little spiel. It's time for us to get into the folk tale of the day. The folk tale of the week. That's what we're going to start calling. We got folk tales and we got proverbs of the week. So now we're about to cover the folk tale that will carry us through this week until next Kooji Chagalia when we get together. I want to say great Kooji Chagalia to everybody. Everybody was born on this day. This is a marvelous day. I am a Kwabana. My daughter is an Abana. We, we vibe on this day, right? Find your day that you was born on. Like I said, and you know, and in the stories, now check this out. This is very important. Another piece that you find in successful, su successful cultures. You find language. Now, I'm not talking about people speaking a di different language. When you go into a successful business that have a successful culture, a successful school, there's a certain language that people have there. You understand what I'm saying? It's a special language that, that they have there. So if you, if you might hear it and it might sound kind of corny to you, like one example, I'll be like, your, huff, your hustle builds muscle. You know what I'm saying? Or, or I say shit like Kooji Chagalia Day. You know what I'm saying? Successful cultures have languages that only people in that culture can really understand and grasp. And this is what we build in family, right here in Columbus. Shouts out to Miss Tiandra. I see you. She said, Oh, you an Albana girl? What's going on? Right? I got one of my day sisters up on this on up on the thing. Alright, so let's get into this folk tale. All right, what I'm using is Aesop Fables. This is from a company called Forgotten Books. For those of you that like books and like to touch them and like old books, they get they got they get all books that are uh, in the public domain and they republish them, and it's real cheap. When I got this, this is about five dollars, right? I mean, and since I got Prime, it was delivered free, right? Powerful, right? And the, the books that they got on their list, if you go to ForgottenBooks.com, you're going to see some old forgotten information, family, that, you know, we need to be pulling on. All right, so now, the story today, and I promise it, it's not a porno, is called The Ass and the Lion Skin. Sound like one of those movies, right? Here we go. An ass. Wasn't black China in that one? <laughs> or was it China Black? It was China Black. It was China Black in that one. Okay. That, that, she was the ass. <laughs> Alright, here we go. An ass, having put on a lion skin, roamed about in the forest and amused himself by frightening all the foolish animals he met in his wanderings. At last, coming upon a, a fox, he tried to fight him, frighten him also. But the fox no sooner heard the sound of his voice than he exclaimed, I might possibly have been frightened myself, myself if I had not heard your bray. Alright, so let me read that one more time. An ass put on a lion skin, roamed about in the forest and amused himself by frightening all the foolish animals he met in his wanderings. At last, coming upon a fox, he tried to frighten him also. But the fox no sooner heard the sound of his voice than he exclaimed, I might possibly have been frightened myself if I had not heard you bray. For those that don't know what bray is, bray is when the donkey does the... Or however the donkey said. You know what I'm saying? As long as he had the skin, he was able to fool people. Anybody want to jump in on that one first? I'll jump in. All right, handle your business. Chop it down. 
Now let me. Now what was the old saying that it it is it is better to keep your mouth shut mm. and be presumed a fool than to open it. How does that end, Hot Jim? And remove all doubt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's what it brings to mind to me. Mm. That's what it brings to mind to me. Because not only that, I mean, you play in this game, you know, you uh, <laughs> you wearing this skin, being somebody that you've never been. Right? Mm hmm Like, uh, I can equate that to uh, gunplay. Mm. Mm. Right? Mm. Mm. Right? Word. I'm, I'm saying mm hmm Now, we, now, now, listen. We in a place where it's a whole bunch of new gun owners. <laughs> Right? Mm hmm How many of them, I don't know if this is a ritual or not, I'm just asking. But how many, how many, one out of ten, how ten, just in your imagination, how many people, men, okay, men or women, when they buy a gun, spend time doing the pose in the mirror? I, I never thought about that one, but I would say maybe about, I would say, about sixty percent. About sixty percent, right? Because we, because w when you, when you spend your life never. Ha I mean, and this is. Let me let me just say. Well, no, I'm not, I ain't even gonna say that right now. But I'm just saying that all my life, I've never owned a fire car. But even when I get one to hold to me it's like let me see what what this look like on me and when i'm in a mirror it's just like mm, you know i mean what do we what do we imagine <laughs> when we're reinventing ourselves in our head with a firearm it's almost the same story as that ass in a lion's skin mm. Putting on something false to make you a little bit seem a little bit more fierce. Right. Hmm. I never thought about that. I never, I, I never, I, you know, that's a good one, Jacques. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot of people running around with lion skins on in, in the form of a gun. Right? And you know who they are, you know what I'm saying? And, and when they open their mouth. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, it's certain, you know, I done been in situations. Since my teenage years where certain motherfuckers would pull guns on me and I just I just knew you dog for, for real? I mean really right. for, you know I mean what you go what you, what you gonna do with that? I was wrong once. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was wrong once. I I was fucking around. I thought I had a mule in in, in the skin, but that motherfucker <laughs> let that he let that bullet fly. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn. I I still be having nightmares about it. my neck still hurt from that shit. You know what I'm saying? But the, the uh, you know what I'm saying? But you know, like I said, you you could tell a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? So you got people pretending. You got people pretending. Lady J, I know you got something for that one. Come on now. Come on now. I'm giving, um, I'm giving you time before I start tearing this. I'm going to tear it up. I'm saving some lives tonight. Let's say We got to save them. We got to save them. I think I want to hear your response. <sighs> no, nah, you don't. You ain't ready for mine yet. Brother Shamar, you got something on this one or y'all going to just let me let me go and straighten up my tie? You know what I'm saying? Because I got on my lion skin right now. Go ahead. Go and straighten up the, the tie because I'm about to go on and, and bust it up. Go ahead. No, I don't have anything on it. All right, hold on. I'm about to get it for you. Hold on. Yeah. 
Let's make sure I'm straight. I'm straight. Okay. I probably, I probably could, uh, I probably could, you know, I could touch on that a little bit, actually. You know, it's probably just as simple as uh, people always putting on the front to do something, you know. People get the latest J's, all the designer outfits, and they go home, you know. They don't have nothing but $2 left in their account. <laughs> some, some ramen noodles, you know. And that's a, that's a pretty uh, common thing when it comes to our culture. You know, I got to get the Louis belt, belt the Gucci cream, the father, you know, things of that nature, instead of putting the money to more things that's going to benefit me for the long haul, mm. or some type of investment, mm. you know, then you got your mule, your mule and lion skin, because I look good, but deep down, you know, I'm not all that. Mm. Deep down, that's what we're going to hit, we're going to... We gonna hit. We gonna hit deep down with this one. My oh God. wait, time out. Can I can can I answer twice or is it a second yeah, thing? You, you, you can you can ask twice, but but hold on. Miss Tiandra has an answer. She said, "I think our kids yeah, yeah. are the most pure at being the fox she put wolf who can sniff out who can sniff the ass out." <laughs> 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 I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> go ahead, girl. Go ahead. But go ahead, Saka. You want to do another one? Go ahead. Oh man, that just hold on. That uh, my mind is buffering right now. I got to get back to what I was about to say about. Yes, yes. All right, here we go. Now, my man was talking about the fashions, right? Mm-hmm. And that just instantly took me to the open mic. You know. And people on here know I'm a performer and I do what I do. I shine light when I'm on the microphone. And I, I really don't like going to these little poetry things where you've got people caressing the mic and really using the microphone as an opportunity to get ass. And I don't like sharing my microphone with that type of energy because I'm not, I'm, that's not what I'm on. But... I especially find it entertaining when uh, when somebody walks and their mannerisms is like, yo, I'm, I'm in this on this professional thing, and they get up to the microphone and like everybody is like seduced with they, you know, with they whole swag. It might be what they wearing. It might be a little uh, mannerism that he's imitating that he sees Denzel doing. <laughs> and he get up on the microphone, and then the band start playing, <laughs> and then before you know it, <laughs> on some basicness. <laughs> and then all the women in the room are just like, oh, man, another one of these. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's interesting when you see that, because there's so many times that we, uh, we go through all of these motions preparing for a moment, except for what we're going to do at that moment. And when it comes up, so we go to the store, we get all, man, I'm going to go to the B-side tonight. I'm going to wear this. Oh, I'm gonna, I got the perfect shoes to go with this. I'm going to put on that axe because I don't want the cologne on my hands. So when I'm dapping up, people, they ain't all mad at me because they smell like me. You, know, you get up to the microphone, oh, man, what, what piece I'm going to do? Okay. Uh, all right, this time I think I'm going to do uh, Love by Music Soul Child. If y'all know that one, the band. Uh... And it just don't go down the way that they thought it was going to go down. And it happens every single night. Mm. Because they're not who they are uh, in their mind. They're, they're not to you who they are in their own mind. And so at some point in that whole display, they feel inadequate. And I'm just using the, the bandstand as a generic way of staying in life because... You know, these are the same folks that end up on the pole as a tourist. Mm. Mm. Dang, he put he put on last week's proverb for this. Hold on, I got. I, wait, hold on. I remix last week's proverb. <laughs> that was hot. That was hot. Now. 
Sister Kiara put, I think, about all the frauds in the various careers. And she then typed up the word authentic. Being authentic. Mm. The ass runs into problems over and over again in our stories because the ass consistently is not happy being an ass. I know that's a messed up name. You know what I'm saying? The ass is consistently, is a consistent representation of a beast that is not satisfied with its place in nature. So it always is trying to be something else. Either it's trying to run with the damn lion and ends up getting eaten or dogged out by the lion. Or it's trying to be the little dog and jump in its owner's lap like it's a little puppy and end up almost killing the owner. Or in this case, it's running around <laughs> pretending to be something that is not. As Sister Tiandra go back to, it's about mm. being authentic. Did somebody else jump up on the line? Uh-oh, somebody else on the line? We got one, two, three, uh-oh. Who else on the line? Or, Hi, this is Ebony. How you doing, Miss Ebony? Welcome to Giami Journey and Folk Tales for Grown Folks. Thank you for uh, calling in. You got something you want to share? Wait, time out, though. Oh, time out. I'm sorry. This, this is for grown folks. Are you over 12? Yes, I'm 21. Oh, okay. Just made it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. You got something you want to share? You you got something you want to share? I'm just listening for now. Mm. Okay, well, enjoy. All right. So, Sister Tiandra say, think about teachers who not only struggle to educate, but despite students or doctors who have no notion of healing. Right? So now, one of the things that we got to really look at when we look at this at this this folktale is that this folktale is pointing out something that we got an individual trying to be something that he's not. Now, but in nature, an animal is not forced or does not have to try to be something it's not. But in man's society, we all are being forced or in a sense funneled into being something that we're not. A lot of us in our lives, we're living uh, a role we putting on a lion skin and everybody knows and everybody can see it. and sometimes we're that ass and we don't even realize that we got on a lion skin everybody know it when we speak everybody you know everybody can feel it but a lot of times in this culture we are motivated to be something that we are not we are motivated to put on the opposite skin of who we are like, for example, as African-Americans, as African-Americans, one of the problems we have is that a lot of us are not wearing lion skins. We think that we are white folk. I'm just saying. Time out. We think that we are, we, we think that we are tan black folk. We are tan. We're not black. We're tan. So we run into a lot of problems. Because when we open our mouth, and when, when we talk about open the mouth, I'm not just talking about your diction. I'm not, I'm not just talking about how you talk. I'm talking about when, when speaking is an action. Your actions betray who you really are. And other what people's, you represent. Exactly. And other people's reaction to you lets you know who and what you are. But you're still in denial. And you're what you're here to do. And what you're here to do. See, and, and in and fact, I tell, sometimes, I'm, sometimes people get messed up when I ask them that straight off. Like, if I don't know who you are, you, you damning yourself in this conversation. Like, hold on a second. Who are you? What's your <laughs> what are you doing here? Right? And some people are not even ready to defend, to, to defend that because... I don't think, I, I think that sometimes we, we are so lackadaisical just moving into like, 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 oh man, I can't even, I'm, I'm getting jammed up. I'm getting frustrated. Don't worry about it. I'm getting frustrated all by myself. Don't, uh, hey, but hey, it, it'll come back. See, because that's what this, com this, this is what these conversations are about because these, we allow these things to roll around in us for the next week and you might come out with something and then you could post on the Giami uh, Journey timeline some new insight that you have on the story. This is what it's about, family, because it's about us sharing. This is a story from us. See, because... I have a mm -hmm. question. Go ahead. 
Um, so the ending, the end of the folk tale. What what is the last line? The last line. I might possibly have been frightened myself if I had not heard your bray. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. a bray. That's that's more like it, right? Was that it? It took me a while to remember. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm old. You know, I got that old database. Um, but you know that the bray. You know what I'm saying? The way a donkey speaks. You know what I'm saying? That 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 betrays what he is. We all have a vibration. Like for example, I mean, I could call, like, I could be in a room. I mean, I, I, I have a personal relationship with my kids. And there's so many of them that I don't be remembering mm. their names. And I could be, hey, boy. And the only boy that looks up is, <laughs> is the one I'm talking to. Because <laughs> it's all in how I say, hey, boy. You know what I'm saying? Hey. <laughs> and it, it's a vibration. Like, a, like, like, like Antoine Fisher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Antoine Fisher, he had that foster mother. It was the way that she said, nigga. She, that, that's how they knew what you were talking about. Nigga. Oh, that's you. <laughs> hey. Um, so I have a question. Go ahead. So when this ash was running around, uh, scaring all the animals in the wild, was he braying then? Yes. He was. And so the other animals did because they maybe for whatever reason maybe because they seen him in the skin they didn't know that he was an imposter so he had to meet someone that was like him in order to be identified you know or like what he was trying to pretend to be in order to be outed is that right basically he he ran into a thinker he ran into he ran into a thinker well, because I, I wouldn't well, say, go ahead. The way, the way I see it, Hashem, is that the fox is the mediator. Like, he uh, he must have been scaring a whole bunch of, like, I mean, it depends on where you at on the food chain. And that's reality with us, too. It's like, yo, uh, if somebody say martial law, we don't know what martial law looks like. And so, you know, the cops start blocking off the street and, we, and, and somebody saying martial law, martial law, it's like, oh, man. What am I supposed to do now? You know what I mean? But when you are of the uh, of a breed of predators, you don't respond in the same way regardless. Mm. Does That's, that make sense? Right. You say they were they were similar enough, like like Lady J was saying. And I like was, the fox is a predator. But the fox was almost afraid. Almost. Well. He said I would have he said I he was. He said, "Had you not opened your mouth, I would have been afraid as, as well." Correct. But right. once you open your mouth, because I, I know. You know, I know me. I know those like me. I know that you're not of me. Is that right? Basically. Basically. Mm -hmm. So, so I um, I think that I've met. I I think it goes along. With what Shock had said, I think that's why I've been so quiet because what he said initially, uh, initially it, it resonated with me, right? Like you look one way, but then once you open your mouth, exactly, it's confirmed that you are that way, right? Mm -hmm. Like you could look one way, but you give yourself away. Um, I've met people like that as well. Yep. And I wonder, I've met people, and I wonder how does, you know, how is it that no one else knows that you are full of, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, she ain't, how, I how said for you, full of shit. And right. maybe it's because I am just what you are pretending to be, or I, I maybe I'm not that, but maybe I know, I've met people who like who you're pretending to be. Now, now check this out because hey. now I mean we okay. see we see this in the culture we see this in the culture all the time. You know what I'm saying? Um um individuals coming in and pretending, you know what I'm saying? They could dress, they put on a lion skin like you wouldn't believe. You know what I'm saying? But then you start having that conversation with them. And I'll be like, uh we have an ass here. You know what I'm saying? 
You know what I'm saying? You, you, you but run. some people get away yeah. with being an ass. Some people get away with being an ass and lions posing forever. Oh yeah. Because again, they're not around other lions. That's right. So nobody, nobody gets it. You know what I'm saying? But nope. then it, it, it can happen the other way too. It can happen the other way in the sense that you can be a lion in an ass of skin. And where if we were to flip the script all the way again, then we would go back to that conversation of uh 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 what is our what's that how's that poem go? What is our our deepest fear is not that our deepest fear Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Uh Miss Ebony yeah. Miss Ebony <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I sure was stuck. I was like, oh, uh, deepest, <laughs> our deepest fear is the electric bill. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you know, the car payment is due. My deepest fear, you know. You know sister, sister, can you say that one more time just so like it can resonate? Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Mm. I say. Mm. I say. I say. Yep. I see, I see that. I see that in people who dim their lights. Oh, man. I watch people dim, dim their lights. And so I always tell my students, like, they always say things like, well, she thinks she's all that. And I say things like, well, why shouldn't she think she's all that? You know, well, why don't you try and be all that? You see what I'm saying? Right. Why do we dim our light? And and so the other thing is, is that in order for, your light has nothing to do with my light. Right. So right. You, you know what I'm saying? We should all be shining just so bright. Like, and now, but why would I need to? Uh, in this culture, they make us think that there's only enough room for one to shine. Correct. Which is dangerous. You know what I'm saying? And let me let me let me say this because this is this is my thing with the ass. The ass is a perfect model of that because as an ass, there is no animal that is better than the ass. If not for animals like the ass, humans would not be where they are. The ass have it has okay. existed for a long time, and the ass trying to be a lion is very dangerous. The ass trying to be anything else but the ass, it becomes uh, not only a threat to himself, but to others. And he was running around brand. And there's something else that we got to start watching for, right? The other animals were so caught up in what they were seeing that they were not able to hear what was really going on. It's like a, cogni a cognizant mm -hmm. dissonance that came over them. They got caught up in the fact of the skin, but they didn't hear what he was saying. They, they was caught up on the authority of that the lion represented rather than the words that was coming out of the mouth. You know what I'm saying? Which a lot of us, we do. You know what I'm saying? We, we kowtow the individuals just because they got on their skin. When we need to let them know, motherfucker, yeah. I'm a predator too. You know what I'm saying? You better back the fuck up. I already know what you are. Right, I'm like, I'm saying. Go ahead. Yeah, so I think, I think that's what it is. Hello. Hello. Mm hmm. Oh, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was saying that I felt like the ass and the lion skin didn't say anything initially. Like, he didn't say anything until he might have been feeling himself, and then the fox was close, and then he let it slip. And he was like, all right, like, then if somebody was close enough to listen, or who wasn't fearless, someone who got close enough to hear. Be like, I'm not, like, the fox is like, yeah, you a lion, but I'm a motherfucking fox. So, if you gonna come close, then I might be considerate of what's going on, or I, I, I'm not, like, overly confident, but I know what I have to bring, you just, gonna, you ain't just gonna punk me, mm. right? But all the other animals that were in the area may not have even got close enough to hear 
what the African Alliance fan had to say, but just was like, oh, shit, that's a lie. I'm going to just keep my distance yeah. and just go about my business and do what I need to do. And I feel like that's something that we get caught in all the time, is that mm, yeah. we assume that these motherfuckers in power Uh-oh. know what they're talking about or that they mm-hmm. have, sorry, this is grown folks, right? Go ahead, they, this grown folks. <laughs> that they um, know what they're talking about, one, or that they're to be feared. Like, no, we very seldom catch, not we, but as a whole collective, like why we are where we are, we very seldom check the people in power. And this goes back to um, Wakanda in, in the movie, when it made me think, how Tim asked the question this weekend, he said, how, do y'all, how would y'all feel if Wakanda really exists? And I'm a person that believes that, I, you know what, I wouldn't put it past us that Wakanda doesn't exist. And that's the, that I'm grateful for, you know, not my imagination, but just understanding what's possible for real. But mm. I, I felt like, I felt hurt because I feel like, how are we going to get into a tussle or whatever and then sell some of our own to where these white dudes, like white boys can come and take us all across the ocean and then take us to a land that wasn't their own. So then there's also people of color over there and then just let shit happen. Like, who? We were just looking at them being asses and lion skin, not saying shit, even though we were lions in our own right and, our, and foxes in our own right. And where was the five to be like, this motherfucker ain't no lion? Like, this is gonna be an ass if we about mm-hmm. to go get our people back. Or you're. And like you thought, really like asked. you thought you were coming over here and getting our people, but actually you about to get got. Like I just, oh, what would happen to our whole story if that had been the case, where we were like, what? fuck that. I think that I, I, listening to her, I'm thinking of um, destruction of a black civilization. Uh oh. Because when yes, when when he outlined. What occurred? It sounds just like what she described. Like it, it sounds just like what she described. We should have known better. We we should have been able to 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 see what was going on. But for some reason, we we didn't. Or uh, yeah, we didn't. We we didn't care enough to know or to get close enough well, to, to investigate. We didn't. Well, well, the, but, people, but now this is now because because. Let's take it. Let's take it there, because uh, in the Songhai Empire, I think it was the Songhai Empire where they talk about in destruction of black civilization. That the Songhai Empire, because uh, we need to really understand that the importance of tradition. But then on on the other end, we have to understand why the why stories are important and why new heroes have to come in in every generation. Because in the Songhai Empire. When they were approached with the idea of guns, because I want y'all to understand that before, before West Asians was running around wild with guns, we had an opportunity to take them. We had an opportunity to get guns. And what we did was we looked at the gun and we saw what it did and it didn't, because it didn't fit into our cultural idea, we passed on the gun. We said, that's a dishonorable way to fight. I want to be up close and see my enemy when I take his life. Not knowing that our enemies right. didn't mind shooting your ass from 300 yards away. I don't want to see you. I just, I just want to walk over your body. You know what I'm saying? So we start dealing with people that was coming from a different culture. Right? We start dealing with, with what, what, does, what does somebody that's pretending to be something that they're not do. Like, for example, the most dangerous individual, back to Shaka's point, one of the most dangerous individual with a gun is a motherfucker that's faking. You know what I'm saying? Because the whole piece is they will put you and them in a situation where they either have to shoot or they may have to lose their life. Somebody right. that's experienced with a gun, somebody that's comfortable who, with who they are, you never know they have to. I have, matter of fact, I have friends. <laughs> Who have been carrying guns for years, and we could be around laughing and joking, and you never know they even got a gun. <laughs> but there's other people yeah. that have to show you, that they have to let you know. You be like, oh, you know, you know, you know, you gonna make you gonna make somebody have to, you, 
We'll make somebody kill you. You 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 know what? Um, one time, Tim, I was working at uh, Rosemont, right? Right. Well, this has happened to me several times. This has happened to me teaching as well. Um, Go to bed, little girl. So I've had I've had situations where you know our young people are fearless. They're fearless. They don't do a good job of picking their battles, right? So even um, you know. Me, I'm thinking that if I were a young girl, I wouldn't be. I, I wouldn't be scared of me, but I wouldn't pick right a. Oh, I, I wouldn't be confrontational with me, right? And you gotta think. I used to be like 300 pounds, so I used to be big, right? And so, I I worked at I worked at um at the school. I was student teaching, and one day a girl stepped up on me. And I had to say to her, do you think that you can beat me? And she said, well, I'm not scared of you. And I said, no, you know, that's not what I asked. Do you think you can beat me? Because you're standing with your fist, your fist clenched, and it's looking like you're, you're about to swing, right? Another time, um, like I said, I was working at Rosemont, and they had left me upstairs. People were not doing their job correctly. So they left me upstairs by myself with these youth that were ready to riot, right? And so this girl, I'm sitting in this chair, and this girl keeps running up on me, I tell and she's like cursing, and finally I stand up and I said, you better back the F up, right? So I tell her to back up. Well, the next day they reported me, so of course when I told her and I stood up, and I took the tone that she took with me, she backed up, she cowered, right? And so the next day I got in trouble and I had to tell them, had I not used my verbals that way, this girl could have attacked me or a number of these girls could have jumped me, right? Because I'm in the mm -hmm. and this is where I'm at. So again, thinking about when other, while she's barking, had I, had, 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 I, had I not known that she was really afraid, had I not known that that fear, like you come off like you're so tough, but... A lot of our kids are afraid. They're watching their friends die. Right. They're afraid, right? They, right? We forget that even in their toughest skin, what, it, this is just these walls that they have put up. But really, they're, they're afraid. They're soft. They're children, right? But I've learned right. working with these children, working in the school that I work in now, that if you give a sense of fear, right? Oh, if I don't it. let you know that I come from just where you think you come from, if I don't speak your language, you'll try to run all over me. Oh my but the God. minute I bark, the minute, the minute I let you know, and, they, and, 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 and teachers, they get on me about my vernacular. They get on me, but the, the thing about what I have to tell them is that I speak, I, I can, I can uh, code switch, but I know how to speak yeah. the, their language. So I make them know that by speaking their language with your your culture, your subculture, right? It's just as it's important to me. I'm going I'm going to validate that for you. I'm going to teach you, uh, show you that I am I too am interested in things that you're interested in to some extent, right? But when I speak their language, that's when they can get their place. But I've watched it over and over again. If you cower, it's, it's if you know, if forever. you argue oh, with the child. Mm -hmm. If you argue with the child, like, I'm an adult. What would I look like arguing with you going back and forth? Because now I just put myself with, no, I'm an adult. <laughs> you know, so right. things like that. But I, I've seen that over and over well, again. Can I, can, can I say something about your story there? Because I want to make sure that this is, this, this is at least addressed. Because their response to your, uh, your reaction is very Western. In the sense that, hi Tim. Now you do martial arts, right? Mm -hmm. I dig this. What she did with her voice is actually a Bruce Lee move. What she did with her voice, if you even watch, uh, what was it? Chinese Connection. When he's in the when he goes over to the school, and and the teacher has all the students gang up on Bruce, right? And he's right in the center. What's the first thing that he does? When he uses his voice with that first, whatever you call it, yell or scream, whatever, that sharp shot, it, 
it causes everybody else to push back into their stand. It, Just with his voice. It, it's called in, in in um in in Japanese martial arts it's called the kia. And the kia is developed because it's it, but we call it it's a battle cry. So when you go to the sweat lodging with the Native Americans, they practice their battle cry, their battle cry during the ceremony. What the battle cry does is the battle cry freezes your opponent's spirit. So at the right yes. time, the, that that yell will freeze an individual spirit. And what it does is it's sort of like a slap. You know what I'm saying? What it does is it throws an individual back into the reality of who they are. In, in a sense, it, it it makes them jump. And it knocks the the uh, the the lion skin up off of them. If it if there's no lion skin, right. if it's a lion skin, <laughs> that shit pops off for a second, and you are you able to? Now I know, I know you would ask. Get your ass back over there, and start pulling that cart. You know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? And it's it's it's, a, mm -hmm. it's called a battle cry. And a lot of us we done gave up our battle cries because we're trying to we're trying to you know I mean because this this now let me and I have to go. To, to the movie, right? One of the reasons a lot of people feel uncomfortable with Killmonger, I believe, is, I mean, I got several, several reasons, but we feel uncomfortable with Killmonger because Killmonger didn't mind using his battle cry. Not only did he care, not, not only was he willing to say and speak what was on his mind, he was willing and able to show his battle cry on his body because when you start cutting up your body and you put on tattoos, is we could say it's just for us, but a tattoo says something. A, a, a skin burn or or, or, or or a lesion on your body says something. It's a story. So when you look at it and he tells you his story, because I, don't, I, I want y'all to remember when he was about to fight the Black Panther and he took his shirt off, he explained. What each one of these means. Each one of these is a life. I've been preparing for this moment my whole life. What makes us feel uncomfortable is that there was a black man in a movie standing up and saying that he was prepared for battle. Makes us feel uncomfortable as much yeah. as. I gotta, I gotta speak to that, Hudson. Go ahead. Because um, I'm so glad you brought it up. My. So I'm. I've always been a fighter and a protector. And because of my personal, um, the way I came up and things that I, you know, just experienced and stuff, which I'm grateful for to this day, I, I'm fearless. I can care less where I am or who it is. And I can, like the lady was talking about earlier, I can close, close with like a mug. And it's authentic. Because it's all part of who I am and just something that I'm able to do. But I have a number of tattoos. And one of the first tattoos that I got was on my neck. And I don't know, at the time, I do a lot of things because I believe that I do have a lot of the ancestors within me, and that's how I'm led. So I know a lot of things that it's like, the only way that I could possibly know is because I was here before, because my ancestors are within me. And I, as I was getting older, I kept wanting to protect everybody. So I would be at the club and be like, you shouldn't, don't touch me like that, blah, blah, blah. and then the female would be like, don't touch my man, blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, what the hell? Like, I'm protecting you. You know what I mean? I had to figure that out. But I still, like, I'm somebody who will pull the trigger. Like, I'm not, it's not like it's skin that's going to fall off. It's like, no, I'm going to, we're going to do this. And so it that like you said it communicates something so even though it wasn't conscious when i was doing it now it's like i i say less because even though i can come off very sweet and like i said before it's very it's strategic and i'm grateful for how it's created that speaks for me that perceives me because i used to work in higher education too and never once and i and i'm always assigned to the at-risk population or whatever they try to call um, our, our, our children. And it's like, don't, it's like I don't get tried that much. Like, I go into the prison and I have no problems. I go to the prison and I'm like, big sister. You know, and I think it has a lot to do with that. Um, the point that you were making. So I just, I appreciate yeah. the point you were making. 
so. I, I Yo, I, pre- I, I just got to say this out loud. Your spirit makes me smile every time, yo. The end. Lady I, J was about I to say something. I want to say that um, when, 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 when I was, uh, I re- the, first, the first fight I lost was the last fight I fought, right? So the first time I lost the fight, it, w- it, was, it was like, and, and people said I won. You know, pe- a lot of people say, oh, my God, but I didn't look like I won. You know what I'm saying? My hair was gone. It was just a really bad situation. <laughs> but one thing that I used to say, I was shocked when this girl, won- you know, when she actually swung on me because for years I had not fought. So I fought so many times. And then people just didn't fight me because of a reputation, right? So even if I were scared, even if I didn't think I would win, I could talk in a, in a sense that would make people back up, right? So this big girl I get in a fight with, like I said, she ends up winning the fight. She changed my, I, I say she won the fight. She changed my life, right? My whole life is different after that because after that I was like, you know what? If, if it means, I thought at that point that I probably could beat everybody, but if it means that I'm going to be ugly and that I'm going to lose my hair and that I could possibly have like a scar that's going to, I don't think I want to fight anymore. Well, I always credit this woman, Angie, with changing my life. Well, long story short, she was one of the individuals that was found dead on Hudson, right? She was found uh, in that home where those young kids went in there. Um, it was drug related. They killed the teenager. They killed the, the uh, a grown man, and they killed this woman named Angie. Right. So I always I, I I cried and I had tears when she died because I always credited this woman with changing my life. Right. But I always remember I was barking at her. I I was doing everything that I had did. We were fighting at school. I was in tenth grade. I'll never forget it. But I was speaking so strongly to her, the same way I had spoke for years that would make people back away, right? Because I used to fight every since forever, but at some point I didn't have to fight no more. All I had to do was speak. You know what I'm saying? All I had to do was talk real strong. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and even if I was afraid, you would have never known. But this, the, the, you know, you, you meet your battle. You know, because right. I was surprised that day. I said, oh, my God, this girl is really going to fight me. She's not scared. You know, I'm talking the strongest talk that I could find muscle up in me. And she wasn't afraid, you know. But, um, I, like, again, it goes back to, you know, it real recognize real. real she could record. probably hear that fear. And that's, it was really in my voice. You probably could sense it. But one, one thing about Killmonger, too. I just want to throw this out. Uh-oh. So this guy, he explained to me, I tell he destroys, he, he had, it seemed like he had some disrespect for his elders. What was that about? All right, time out. Let's go. Oh, that, wait, that, wait, wait, wait. That's my problem. Hold that on. My, I'm about to, I, I'm okay. about to, I'm about to get it. I'm about to get it. All right, but I got a story because you told your story. Now, with my sons, one of the things I used to tell them, I said, listen, and I had to stop this. You know, I ain't doing this with Cleve. But I told my sons there's three types of people. It's people that want to win. It's people who can fight but don't like to fight. And it's people who really, really like to fight. And there's one way that you could determine who's who. They're like, how's that, Pops? I say a, a, a slap. Because, a, <laughs> no, really, really, really. I, and I had to stop doing this with my sons because, you know what I'm saying? Because I said, listen, when you slap somebody, it's sort of like the key out. It, it, it takes them all the way back and really gets them into their spirit. So if you fighting somebody or somebody want to fight you and they run in their mouth and you can't really tell where they at, Give them a slap. Because if y'all about to fight, y'all going to fight anyway. <laughs> you slap them, what happens is that they are immediately revert back to the child and start talking shit like, you shouldn't have slapped me, blah, blah, blah. This motherfucker put it there, blah, blah. You, you know that it's not worth it because as a man, when I ball my fist, and, and, uh, did, and, and don't take this wrong, sisters, when I ball my fist and I punch you, what I'm giving you is I'm giving you respect. 
I'm saying that you are a man and you're worthy for me to battle with my fist. I said, you don't waste your fights on motherfuckers that's just woofing. Uh, on, on, on individuals that are not really warriors. I said, but you're going to run into two problems. Because there's two, other, there's two other options. When you slap a motherfucker that likes to fight. Be ready for the fight of your life. Because they like the pain. It's, they, they're out there. But that's like 10%. But then you also may run into one of those that really don't like to fight. And you go on and you, you use the smack, slap method. You usually don't want to even get an argument with these. And these motherfuckers, they don't like to fight. But they can. And it's hell. But going back to the Killmonger piece and the whole disrespect for the Wait. elders. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got your story. Go ahead. No, no. I just wanted to add to the slap. In fact, I've taken the slap to a different level. See... If you from a slap to a smack, look. If you smack somebody on the side of their head, if you smack somebody on the side of their head and you cuff that air and that gush of air go in their ear, you know what you do to them. You disorient you know them. You disorient them. But you go ahead. totally disorient them because his balance, his equilibrium, is in his ear. So if you smack him in the most appropriate way, he will be dazed and confused for about five seconds when he's trying to figure out what his next move is because he cannot make that move because he's a... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just... All right, so now... Go ahead. Killmonger and the disrespect for the elders. Right now, we have to understand the order of Wakanda. What the king says goes. Now, I know a lot of us don't agree with that. But in Wakanda, what the king says goes. So if the king give an right. order, you have to follow that regardless of whether you are elder or not. Now, one of the things that a lot of us, because this this is what I had to post on my timeline. And I know people going to get mad at me. One of the things I asked one of my teachers one time, because we were we was studying my eye. And I said, well, I understand that the heart can be too too heavy. And when your heart is too heavy, of course, you know that you are thrown into the monster's mouth. He eats you up and shit you back out. And you got to either start over or you in, in, in hell or whatever they have for hell back in Kimmy. But I said, is it a possibility that an individual's heart can be too light? Never got an answer. Right? Because this, my, this is my issue. A lot of us don't understand really what revolution means. What revolution, mm -hmm. what revolution or changing the paradigm means is that you may have to smash everything. The elders, if the elders are involved in what you're trying to change and they are not willing to budge, what are you supposed to do? I respectfully ask for you to retire and to move. No. You get you, that. Said, you don't think that that you don't think that that was an egotistical move. No, I, no, no, I think I, I think I think it was a strategic piece because what needed to happen at that point in time when that boy became king, there is no question. Has that happened? Has that happened in history? What? Oh, for real? All right, check this out. In China, yeah, wait, hold on. In China, in in China. When they had their revolution and the parents were against some of the kids, they had the they had them kids line up the parents and shoot them motherfuckers right there in, in, in China. If we look at all of the battles, right, or all of the people coming to power, when people stood in your way, they had to be eliminated. One of the things that we kind of held on to is, in a sense, the respect for the elders. And I'm not saying that the respect for the elders is the wrong thing, but we have to be honest with ourselves sometimes. I'm sad you use, I'm sad you use China for an example. I need another example. You need another example? That wasn't an example. Oh, I got a yeah, question. I'll oh, check this out. You ready? I'm going to give you a better example. Nixon. Don't bring up those examples. Those examples are horrible. Don't bring up those examples. Don't bring up those examples. Don't bring up those examples. examples. Don't bring up those 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 examples. How about the first individual that united the two kingdoms? You think he walked through there and 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 and, and basically everybody just said, "Oh, we're going to unite." No, he went to war. 
And in war, see, because this is what we don't understand. When war, when, when homeboy took the throne, he was immediately at war because people were in doubt of his leadership. They already didn't accept him because one of the pieces that a lot of people were not even really recognizing is that they left that boy there without even considering. It wasn't even a second thought. They killed that boy's father and left him near. Why? Because we wanted to keep the line pure. Even when he went through his ritual, his dad said, I wanted to take you to, to, to Zamunda, but I couldn't take you to Zamunda because they would have thought you was lost. What they was talking about is the mixed bloodline that he was bringing back to the kingdom. They didn't respect him. So part of the, if you can't, if you won't respect me in war, you sure will fear me. This is that's a strategy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, and, and, and I'm not saying that it's the right thing to do all the time, but one of the things we got to really start thinking about in our minds, if we're talking about being revolutionaries, we do know there's going to be some elders that get in our way. Let me tell you. Right. Uh, wow, okay. Now it, I got next. I got next. <laughs> all right, listen. Hi, Tim, you are talking about the importance of tradition. I'm talking about the tradition of war. The tradition, in the tradition of war, if you are not versed in the art of war, then there's no way that you can represent the art of love. See, they came out of not just having a loyalty to a king, but they had admiration for him. They loved him. They had no love for this new king. And it did not matter because he trained his whole life as a mercenary, knowing backwards and forwards the art of war. And in war, sometimes people got to go. Sometimes, you know, I mean, it's just so the whole piece is. That kind of threw people off, but one of the things, listen, in, in in the Bible, and I know I don't go to the Bible a lot, one of the things that, um, one of the stories, I love the story of David and Solomon. And mm -hmm. do y'all know that David could have built the temple of God, but God would allow David to build it. Why? Because his hands were bloody. His hands were he was filthy with this world. David laid the foundation so that the temple could be built by somebody like his son who was pure. David had killed. David had disrespected. David had did all types of shit. Wow. You know what I'm saying? In order to make something happen. And what some of us got to understand as nation builders, we got to go to war. And it's going to be some elders that's going to be in the way of, of what we need to do. It's going to be some young people that's in the way of what we're doing. But for some reason, we think that we can have our cake and eat it too. Freedom requires for us to make choices. And sometimes those choices are hard. You, I mean, yeah, I mean, because... That's but, and, and, the point and, that I wanted to make. Oh, go ahead, Beth. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go. No, no. It's when we had an opportunity to get feedback at the theater. And this is what I said. In the very beginning of the movie, when the the king Tataka killed the brother, it's because the brother there's a difference between fear and respect. So I can respect the elders. I, I show great respect to my elders and I love my elders and they know that. But I don't fear them. And mm -hmm. I I feel like age is a social construct just like race is. And so, just like they created race to be, as if one is lesser than or more than, and that certain, if you're older or if you're younger, you have certain um, rights or you don't. And that's not necessarily the case because, again, if we think about our spirituality, we all have access to the ancestors and we all. Let me, let me. This is what happened. He was found at fault. His brother came and addressed it and said, okay, you'll just need to plead your case with the elders. At that point, he exercised fear as opposed to respect and felt like I can't 
go uh, to the elders with it because they won't be able to receive it. So I'm just going to say, fucking it in at all. If he would have uh, been like, you know what? I believe in what I got to say. I'm about to go say it anyway. And then I just feel like that, that was that. In the very beginning of the movie, that was the fall because we are so fearful of addressing or sniffing out the the ass and sheep skin or lion Damn. skin, whatever it's called, the ass and lion skin, so we just decide not to say anything, even if we've been given the opportunity to speak up. And that goes to our something? elders as well. Yes. Can I ask you something? Do you feel that a series death was warranted not warranted but do you think that it was in vain no i don't think it was in vain i just think that we continue to make shit harder for ourselves because <laughs> we um because i mean he like could have just that point, he could have just he could have just sat there and and watched the duel happen but he he sacrificed like, himself Wait, I don't know. No, it's, 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 it's my fault. It's, it's, you know, like, nephew, it's my fault. I'm the one. I'm the reason why your dad. Oh, no, no, no. No, I thought you were asking if the dad's death was in vain, and I was saying no to that. And I feel like it's the same thing for me, like, us, even slavery taking place, because I really believe that we have the opportunity to, to reverse that shit, to actually fight back. But we just decided, well, we're just going to be good over here, and... <laughs> Just let them take them. You know what I mean? I, right. I, I want to go back to something you said, Hot Chill. You you said that um the you you said something about the post that you had on Facebook about the um the balance or my yacht, right? Your mm-hmm. good outweighing your bad, right? Mm-hmm. So this this is um I I actually. No longer um, with with if, if I could wrap my mind around the whole ancestor piece, I probably would tell you he was um, my favorite character, one of my favorite characters, probably because I root for the underdog, right? And so one thing that I do know is, or I believe in my heart, is that when it comes to Judgment Day, I feel like our, I mean, my belief is that our bodies will atone for everything that they have done. So all good and bad that came from your mouth, all good and bad that came from your hands, from your heart, from your feet, you know, everything. It will be like a running receipt. And say you get one tenant for every um, uh, a good thing, um, well, bad thing, and two for every good, right? Um, or I'm saying that wrong. You get two marks for every good, yeah, and one for every bad. So it's almost impossible for your bad to outweigh your good, right? But you can do so much bad and still it could equal out because you've got to have your yin and your yang, right? Like uh, that's something that you taught me about the whole energy piece. You're right. going to have to have your good and your bad, right? And so even with what Killmonger did as far as the, the, the lives that he had taken and everything, I feel like in his heart, what he was, what his plan was, was good, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, and to, he was looking to. I gotta help. disagree. No, well, I'm, I, gotta, I, I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm a, and I'm gonna tell you why. But go ahead, go ahead, Shaka. One reason, and one reason alone is that Killmonger did not want to end oppression. He wanted to change the oppressors. Now I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna kill that shit. I have to kill that shit because I, I'm hearing this. <laughs> See, because I'm, I listen, family, either we run the world or we don't. We, 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 we tried to, I mean, we, we, we tried, the Native Americans tried, <laughs> the Polynesians tried to have and treat everybody equally. The shit didn't work. We, because. But why the whole world? Well, I mean, why not? Because it's, it's, we live in a global economy. Me and you right now, right now, somebody could be on this fucking phone from Africa right now. This is a global economy. You know what's so funny, huh, Tim? You know what's so funny? Go ahead. Is that, is that we have allowed, since way before this movie even came out, we have allowed one of the three companies in the whole world that is taking over the world as we speak 
do it while we're distracted with the story. No, but hold on. Now, but the way we're distracted is because I hear you going to Walt Disney. And I feel you. But Walt Disney put out a story that we're able to discuss the narrative and hopefully we will be able to take action after we have conversation about this. Because listen, man, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. All I'm saying is that when we, we constantly, we're so fucking righteous. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're so fucking right. Listen, the fact of the matter is. We are. That's, we, we, we're, 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 we're No, but hold on. Time out. I take that. I, I take, I oppose that. Because God, God is the ultimate. God is, God is a. God, listen to me. God. When we talk about it, if you say you God, then you need to be in, be able to embrace that devil in you as well. See, because God is about balance, baby. I mean, I don't, see, this this is what kills me. Wait, well, hold on. Now, I that. now, I said that so, I agree. so, I in, said that I totally agree with your argument, <laughs> but I totally agree with it now. I agree. You have to have, and, and that's the only other piece that I'm, you have to have the balance. I believe that. You have to have the balance. Now, but check this out. Let me let me give y'all a story, a quick story. There's a, there's a certain story hey. in the story between Heru and Set when it was going to battle. Heru representing the so called the so called positive, but he was fighting. It wasn't peaceful. You know what I'm saying? They was they went to war. People was dying. Uh, 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 regulations was violated. Elders' words were disobeyed between Set and Heru. Set wasn't doing all the bad shit. Set and Heru went to battle. Set ripped out Heru's eye. Heru cut off uh, uh, Set's ball. Excuse my language, ladies. Right? Well, I ain't y'all grown. Cut off, cut off Heru's balls. And Heru had Set in a position where he was about to kill him. But at the last minute, because Set is, is his uncle. His mother came up and blocked Heru's sword. Set took this moment to escape. What did Heru do? Anybody know what Heru did? Heru leading the revolution. Heru is about to get his father's crown back. Heru is about to stabilize the whole piece, and he's about to kill what everybody, according to the story, supposedly believes is evil. But his mother stops him. Heru, out of his anger, turns around and cuts off her head. What? Yeah. Yeah. He cuts off her head. Now, I'm not saying that that's the righteous thing to do, but what we got to understand, man, our ancestors done told us a long time ago how this shit is going to go down. Some of us are some of us are so caught up in the false idea of righteousness, where righteousness means right, where it's only on one side. We need a new word, right? Because righteousness, no, it's not righteousness, it's it's the right word. We just gotta know that everything is. We we have to know that and understand this, that all things are connected. The whole when you go back to Buddhism, Hinduism, every, every every last one of these stories and every last one of these narratives in every ancient land goes back to the same idea. And there's that idea of balance. It is that idea of that yin and that yang. You reap what you sow. It, it, it's that, that maya. It's all the same narrative throughout every ancient land, the same story. And so you got to have balance. I agree. But not, I, I agree. But how temp Go ahead. Oh, but, to, but to Hatim's point, when you say we need to find the word, that word is there for the sentiment that you feel, and when you and, and when you figure it out, you gonna let us know. But it's but what you feeling ain't rooted out of right. We, I mean, it, it, okay, am I right? Can I, can, we, can I be? Can I have some left leftishness in there too? <laughs> some what? Can I? Left leftishness. You got righteousness. We need some leftishness uh, as well. It's all balance, though. <laughs> so, okay, so real quick, real quick. Um, one thing that I I have I have not been um surprised. Um, I have not been thrown by the the, the commentary, the dialogue. Um, I just I'm not surprised at all about the negative and the feedback and the push. 
behind this 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 movie and how people uh, that look like me are you know throwing jazz and they they're going to make this up and it is not. But I'm gonna tell you why I'm not surprised because I remember uh, uh, when I was doing my show, I, I one day was talking about role models. And we began to debate about who was a role model. So the next show, I said, you know what? I'm going to do a show of positive black role models so that you don't think it's Little Wayne. And you don't think that just because this person is trending in media, right, it, 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 that, 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 it, uh, that this, is a, this is a role model, right? So at this point, President Obama, Obama was the president. So I, I found this meme online because I'm just searching, you know, black role models. And so there's this meme of Obama, right? And so I post this on my Instagram and I promise you that I lost so many uh, uh, followers. I lost so many people called in. I only had like two likes and normally I would get upwards. I don't know how many likes. I had so many comments where people were, were choosing me to think just because I said that this man was a role model, right? And so I told them we're looking at the glass half full, I have empty instead of half full. I never had no preconceived emotions, no unexpected uh, expectations when this man took office. I understood it was politics, right? But somewhere in there, there is a message. Just like when, when, when our people were enslaved and they would make these songs and they would make this music, somewhere in there, there was a message that we could latch on to, right? Somewhere uh, 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 in the stories that were told, there was a message. In the Bible, those parodies, there is a message. In this movie, there is a message, right? right? There is a message. And so I could look at it as half full or half empty. There is something that we could take out of it that could help us with, with understand the state where we're at. Or, or some type of coping, whatever it is. There is, there is something that says speaks volumes of my people. It speaks volumes of my people, how many people went out and seen it. It speaks volumes of my people that they would even feel the need to, to, to embrace the culture, right? This idea that you have all these people who maybe a lot of these people may not have owned a piece of, uh, of, uh, Kente Spa or something that looked like African clothing, but they, but now they do. You know what I'm saying? And they'll have that in their wardrobe. And hopefully this, and I don't think I hope it wasn't made in China. Yeah, so, it, it, and, and, that is, and, and that is what it is. But instead, you have so many people. I've watched them, I've listened to them, and I've not debated them. I've not, you know, I've not engaged in any commentary with them because I feel like that would be like beat the dead horse. You know, this understood me not be explained. I'm, I, I can't beat this into your head. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All I can do is take it and do what I, you know, I, I can take it, embrace it for what I, and, and help my kids help this, it, it, you know, burn a light in them. I was so excited that my kids fought with me. They Now, they got to see it Saturday, but then they fought with me and made me take them again Monday. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we dressed as, you know, the first time we wore our Simba shirts, Simba shirts, but this time we dressed in our attire. You see what I'm saying? And it was not like, we, we had plenty of it. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. You know, um, and I, I just, you know, I don't get the, the extra. Well, and I'm I mean, not a Marvel fan. Well, I don't know anything the, about Marvel. The, 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 <laughs> the issue is, like I said, everybody has, ha, has um, the ability to discuss a story. You know, I just believe in finding a story. Some people don't find Story is important, but like like I told y'all this morning, one of the things about stories, what it does, like for example, I could put, we could do a brain scan on all of us, and I could present basic facts, and your brain might spark up a little bit, but I could take the same basic facts, and I could construct them into a story, and your brain start lighting up, because your brain is looking for connections. Like I, like I told y'all before, story is an ancient technology that is used to help us build. I mean, it's, it's used to help us become a better culture, help us become a better community. And I see the value in all stories, like you. I mean, like even 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 Obama, because, you know, I don't agree with you on, on, on some of the Obama stuff, but the point you just made, I agree 100% because he does have a, have a story. And anybody that's looking for a gem, they can go through a story and they can find that gem if that's who they look up towards. You know what I'm saying? But you got some right. of us. 
We got some of us that are so damaged and, and believe in the power of the white man so much that it don't even matter what type of movie came out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, 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 it, it amazes me when you sit down and you talk to some of our people and they, they got on, you know, they, they, they got on the lion skin. You start talking to them and they start talking about the white man like he's not just, he's not just God like us. The white man is the creator and there's well, no way that you could beat them. They got a 200 year plan. And I'm so arrogant. This is how arrogant I am. I honestly believe that if I have a problem planning a surprise birthday party for one of y'all, I find it hard to believe that a motherfucker could run the world for 200, I mean, uh, have, run the world for 500 years and there's no problem. These motherfuckers, see, and one of the things we got to really get in our mind is that these motherfuckers that we fighting against have been the luckiest motherfuckers on this planet. It hasn't been planning. That's where, we, it, that's it where I disagree. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, just, I, I totally disagree. Go ahead. Um, I, I, I just look over, I, I look at the movement, everything, um, you know, that has occurred, the, the, the things that have occurred throughout history. And it's just my, my thinking. The one thing that the, 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 the Caucasian people did very well is that they figured out um, sociology, social uh, psychological warfare. They, I feel like they sat in the corner of the earth and they looked around and they said, you know what? You know what? We're outnumbered. There's no way we're going to be able to wage war. There's no way we're going to be able to fight all of these people that have colors and, and don't look like us, right? So I have to come up with several different several different ways that I could be a victor even though there's no way I could uh, I could raise an army against this number of people I'm outnumbered we, I'm outnumbered so they came with and, and this is just my belief but I'm this just saying and, and when, I, I, at, I, I just, when I look at what, what they were able to do colonize, as far as colonization when I look at what they would do as far as socialization when I look what when I look what they they're able to do and they continue to do, Listen, even though they're outnumbered, we, that, that did take strategy and on, that took some thinking. On they got their wait, own hold on. Ideology. Listen, listen to me. Also, it took luck. It took a motherfucker willing to go out and try something and experiment rather than waiting to have. Word. Wait, hold on. Rather one one go word. Go ahead. Propaganda. Oh God, here we that's go. my only word. All right, cool. Propaganda. All right, wait, 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 wait. If that's the your only word, that's not. You said you said it three times. If that's your word, listen to me. Even that, even that, they stumbled on accidentally. I'm just saying, I family. Don't it. I'm just saying. See, because listen, listen. We just did. We just did symbol this weekend, and it was hitches. But what we do, we did it, we moved out, people did planning. When you needed something, somebody was able to fill in, we did it, we took action. One of the things that stop us from actually growing is a lot of times we don't, we're not taking actions. We, we're waiting for the perfect moment. We, like, for example, I used to have people in my life say, well, you need to save for a rainy day. Well, goddamn, I'm black in America, it's raining every motherfucking day. You know what I'm saying? So I have to be, have a group with me that's saying, listen. We're going to experiment. And that's all they did. See, because I find it hard to believe that they all sat around at the table and said, hey, we're outnumbered. When these motherfuckers thought the world was flat for a long time, give me a break. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. But that's just me. But yo, family, this is Brother Hatim. We have went 35 minutes over. I want to thank everybody that hung in there. I want to thank all those people on Facebook. I want to thank those people that might be listening on Spreaker. I want to thank each and every last one of my guests. Shaka has hung in there. Lady J has hung in there. Brother Shamar has hung in there. Sister Ebony has hung in there. And coming in, holding up the rear, the final one that's running towards the finish line, Sister Tiandra, is hanging in there. So, family, I want to thank every last one of y'all, and I want to give each of y'all the last, or at least your last word before we close this out. Sister Ebony, well, go hold on, time out. Sister, hold on, Sister Ebony, go first. Um, 
Can I get an example of what um, like I'm supposed to say? Oh, no, I mean, just like say peace. Your message, your message for the people. Your message for the people. Does somebody else go first the first time? Oh, that's cool. So this is our first time, you know. I mean, like I said, this is like you could just say bye or peace or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Or you could do like... Oh, okay. If you want to sing a song, you can sing a song. If you sing a song, I'll sing a song. Well, uh, I enjoy listening to everyone speak. Um, I like a couple different things. Um, I enjoy hearing the different factual things. Whoa, the phone went out, baby. Hello. Your phone went out. Yep. Um, I said I enjoy hearing you guys speak about um, things you spoke about, especially like the historical stuff. Um, I like learning about history, so that was interesting. And I liked hearing the stories that you told me. So, yeah, it was nice. Thank you. I hope you join us again. Absolutely. No Brother Shamar, you ain't said nothing in a while. Go ahead. You got some last words? Or is you, is uh, you... I think I think it's very important to, you know, based off of the story that was given today, the folk tale, I think there is I think it's very important to stay true to yourself and always improve who you are deep down, whether you're lying or an ass. You know, if you stick to your to your self work and improve on your on yourself personally, you know, then you can you can eventually reach that, that line tier or above that. If you show up a lot of tools you have in your arsenal. Alright. I'm gonna bring it down to Sister Tiandra. Now, I'm just going to express gratitude because when I feel like we come together on this platform and the Sundays and all of that, I just feel like I'm home. I feel like I don't have to explain anything. I don't have to give a disclaimer. I don't have to watch my mouth or think before I speak or try to be strategic. Like, it's nothing like that. I can just breathe and be home. So I'm grateful for that. Um, I feel like, like the brother was saying earlier, like, just before me. Like, we can just all be the animal that we were created to be or the beings that we were created to be in their purest form without having... Because black people, we have to put on sheepskin all day mm. and not bite some of these people's heads off and, and so and dumb shit down sometimes just to be strategic. And it's nice to just be completely pure. Mm. So now I'm gonna leave it to the last two to decide on who go next. Go ahead, sis. You know you want All right. to. Okay, so I, I just have my same message that I always leave, you know. We are in the um the time of the greater in the midst of the great awakening. It is our time to rise and shine. I wanna uh encourage everyone to do something every day in the name of the movement. Read a book, article, donate to a cause, volunteer your time and services, use your social media network to enlighten and inform, uh, sign a petition, march, do a peaceful protest, participate in a boycott. Um, the choice is yours. We all have to do something. Um, last but not least, if we want change, we need to uh, keep more change in our pocket. Again, the, uh, the, the great awakening is here. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I say in one of my songs, I say, uh, oh man, I just start, I say, uh, we need to stop speculating and moving to action. The war isn't waiting, it's just getting disastrous. Time to change the way we think, what we say, what we do, strategize, find the tools to build and execute. We are the ones that's chosen, chosen. The enemy is closing, closing. They got the masses hypnotized. 
It's time for us to open their eyes. Words from the wise never catch a pearl among swine. It's just a waste of time, cause they can't see it shine when you walk amongst the blind, even when you reflect divine. So, the one thing that I really want to increasingly encourage you all who are listening today, who are listening a year from today, who are listening in a decade from today, I want you to understand that it is your responsibility to own your narrative. It is your responsibility to make sure that it is made available to those who you want to hear it, for those who you want to inspire through your story and the stories that you tell, because only through that will we find true tradition. All right, family, I want to thank everybody that's checking this out. Like he said, whether you check it out tonight, tomorrow, or 100 years from now, because it may be up. You know what I'm saying? If it is 100 years from now, write up a comment. I want to see if I can see it right now. But um, um, I want to send shouts out to everybody. Um, remember to like and share on Facebook. If you, got, if you got me on YouTube, make sure you do that. You know what I'm saying? You can follow on Spreaker. But family, let's build. Like I said, think about the folk tale because our discussion, our discussion was just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much, so many lessons that we could pull from each one of these. And I'm just saying, please, pull something out. Pull what's meant for you because our stories are layered. We're going to have a discussion about this maybe three years from now. The same story and our view on it is going to be so different, it's going to amaze you. Right? So, family, this is Giambi Journey Media. I am your host, Brother Hot Tim, and of course, you know this has been FFGF, also known as Folk Tales for Grown Folks, and this is a Heart of a Simple production. Well, you know, we strive, strive, strive to blow up your old paradigms with that, we're out. <laughs> Peace out, fam. All right, Spreaker. Once again, sending out love, mad love. Thank you for tuning in. I am out.